Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplays. And do I need to mention what this video is going to be about? No, I don't. Version 7 is almost here and with it we have so many updates it's beyond belief. Now as a playtester, I've had a, I'll be honest, I've had a couple of weeks off building up the hype a little bit for when this was going to be coming and oh my god when I jumped in guys people complaining on the forums about vehicles the the wait has been worth it honestly I cannot explain to you the worth the wait has been worth it I was in a game last night where I was in a compound in a Humvee on the 50 cal and a BTR turned up smashed the Humvee to pieces while I was in it I then had to run like a girl screaming into a compound as the BTR blasted everything and drove off like it was a walk in the park. I decided for a little bit of fun to shoot it with the saw, which is like throwing rocks at a tank, and it obliterated me instantly. So believe me, the game has changed way beyond belief and it is just ugh, the wait has been worth it and we actually have a little teaser here, so let's get this teaser on here for you guys to have a look at while I shut up. Hype! Yes, hype, 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 hype. So let's get into it. As you can see, the, the, the developers have been really, really busy. Again, people complaining on the forum saying, what's happening? They're not doing anything. They've been doing a serious amount. Major changes. So we have new vehicles. We have Humvees. We have technicals, Urals, BTRs. There's a lot in here, and every single one of them feels fantastic i can tell you now that when you jump into the say the logistics truck or even the humvee actually and drive around the vehicles actually feel like they've got weight and physics to them now if you come from an armor background you may know what i'm talking about some of those vehicles in armor feel a little bit floaty and while there are a few little things to iron out in playtesting for the vehicles which we don't need to go into because it's it's relevant there are a few little slight little issues which are getting worked on they actually feel really heavy like they've got weight to them and this is brilliant that btr when you see it come in or even the humvees honestly if you're infantry and you see it come in and you're out in the open you're fucked you are fucked so this means you're gonna have to think about positioning you're gonna have to think about moving you're gonna have to think about in your squad the rpg gonna which now is a different type two types of rounds which we will get into in a little bit a little bit further into this video so a lot more tactics have now opened up and yeah let's move on um yes yeah, good kicks uh vehicle warfare transport trucks dismounting apcs we also have a fire support as well so let's have a look down here as you can see so now each vehicle is broken up into its supply capacity how many people it can carry its respawn timer and its ticket value so for example this ural here we can carry 13 infantry. So if you've always wanted to play logistics or transport, you can now do it in squad. 13 guys in the back of here. You blow that up with a couple of RPGs. That's a lot of tickets. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, now, if this vehicle is destroyed out in the field, your squad leader or your team, once you've... Oh, we'll get into that a little bit further. Basically, you won't get it for another three minutes. It's not a lot, but three minutes is quite a lot in game, and this vehicle is worth eight tickets, and so forth and so forth. As you can see here, the logistics trucks. Now, what do you need the logistics trucks for? Well, when you actually put down as a squad leader, let's say a Dushka or a 50 cal, eventually you'll see up at the top left in a new UI that your supplies will run out. You'll actually need a supply truck, which you have to go back to the main base, rearm, come and stay near the 50 cal and it will rearm it, etc. Such as the same with the FOB if you want building materials, etc. etc. So you get the idea. You can now gonna have a dedicated truck and logistics section. 
Now, fire support group, again, <laughs> it's hard to describe the effects work and Anders' audio on these, especially the Dushkas. I, I've actually got a video, a short clip that the devs have approved me to show you today, but I can't actually post it till later tonight um, for certain reasons. Uh, you will see the beautiful animation on the Dushkas and the audio. Anders has just absolutely blown it out of the park again. The audio, if you've got your speakers up loud, will just literally rip walls, plaster off your walls. <laughs> it just absolutely fucking... Oh, yes. Well, you'll see when you get in and try it. And also the, the, the flash bursts off these and the effects, just amazing. Um, yes, the actual uh, BTRs, the driver here can put the hatch down. Uh, the infantry can actually look out of these side ports and we have a main gun and we may possibly have been told be also getting a zoom option for the gunner on top. Very, very effective. Basically, if you've got 13 infantry in this uh, and on the other side, they've only got, say, the odd Humvee or support trucks or in a compound, you can literally just roll in and just annihilate everything. It is amazing. So once you start to hear this, if you're infantry, start to panic. Uh, the militia, as it mentions here, they also get camel trucks, which are just ace. You hide them out in the woods. It's not the easiest thing to see. Uh, vehicles in squad are valued at a certain number of tickets, and if they're destroyed in the field, will incur a ticket loss. So think of them as quite valuable. You want to look after these. And as we mentioned, there is a respawn timer. Let's get down to the logistics system. So this is, our, as I was mentioning, you go back to the main base, resupply the truck, drive it back up to the FOB or the heavy support weapons, and this will rearm them and you're up and running again. So let's have a look down here. I won't go through all of this. It's going to be boring you to death. Now, the claiming system is a great way to stop any old Rambo or any old COD player coming onto the server, jumping in a Humvee and thinking it's a taxi, bombing off into the middle of nowhere with his little tiger skin marksman rifle and being a complete and utter tit. Yes, you can't do that now. In order to claim a vehicle at the beginning, if I was an inf infantryman at the beginning, we've just spawned in and I tried to get in a vehicle, I can't. The squad leader has to get in a vehicle. That be then becomes your squad's vehicle. As soon as the squad leader's jumped in, the infantry can jump in and you're off and running. It also means that the other people in the squad can drive the vehicle. Now, if I drive off into the middle of nowhere, I'm setting up an FOB and I leave the vehicle for a while. Other members of other squads cannot take my vehicle. They cannot piss off with it. So that is a good thing. You can leave your vehicle in safety. doesn't mean that other squad leaders can't take it, but other squad members cannot do it. So it's a great way of stopping that Rambo thing and you actually own your vehicle, which is called a passive claim. In order to keep an active claim, you must have a squad member in the, in the vehicle, preferably the gunner seat. Losing your vehicle, eight minute cooldown after claiming. After, you, after your squad makes its claim on vehicles, squad leaders may not claim another vehicle for another eight minutes. This works in the same way as rally points, where there is a required cooldown period. If your vehicle gets destroyed or abandoned, you will need to wait for the cooldown period in full before you can claim another vehicle. Exactly. Pack responsibly. Right. As you can see, here's a couple of shots of some of the vehicles. And they really are, as I mentioned, brilliant. The... 50 cal on the Humvees is very, very effective. And once you start to fire it and you see the tracer fire going up the fields or the cornfields, you'll just be in absolute squad heaven. Believe me, you can, of course, overheat the barrel. So you don't want to be on full burst. And there are possibly some updates in the playtesting, which I'm not going to discuss. So things are going to change for some of the weapons on these vehicles. Brilliant. Hard to see what you're looking at when you're at full burst, but that's how it would be in real life. We've also got a new radial menu, which is brilliant. We were testing this last night. Now, squad leaders, if they see an enemy up on the hill, they can mark it in 3D, and it will leave a 3D mark in the environment for the rest of your squad to look at, including waypoints. 
and these will stay on screen for a while and then disappear. So we can see on here, got this new riddle menu now. So if I put down there, defend this area, it's also on the map and the whole of your squad can see that in the 3D environment. So if I want to tell the saw gunner, look, I want you to go up to that water tower, which you can't, or look at this water tower. You can see that marker up there and suck in the rest of the squad. A function that's been needed a long time in squad. It's finally here. The UI has been overhauled. It's slick, it's sexy, it's, 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 it's tits. Let's leave it at that. It really is a great update and something that initially was a little bit confusing. It's like, well, what does this mean? What does this mean? You'll soon pick it up. Easy, easy, easy. That's the new UI system. Now we have new weapon systems, the heavy stuff. The Dushka, oh my God, which is what you're looking at now. A fucking... Uh, Another one of these where no no amount of me talking or looking at an animated gif here is going to tell you how fucking beefy these things are. The, the squad leader can put them down as an emplacement. You put down the bi uh, the tripod, uh, which has got three legs, Dushka on top, fire, fire, fire. And the animation work on the reloading is just, it really is top notch, including taking the, the, the box of rounds off. Place them on the floor and replacing them with a new box. And the actual rounds, the belt, so it seems so. It looks like it's got physics when you actually see it running. It just looks fucking amazing. And the, the actual muzzle flash and the volume that Anders has put in for this is... Ugh. <laughs> it's, it is aggressive, put it that way. And when you see the trace of fire just blasting across some of these fields you'll realise you made the right choice in back in squad. The weight really was worth it. Uh, yeah, we've expanded it with uh, the Pashpas submachine gun, the SKS rifle, the G3 rifles. I mean, there's quite a lot in it. I mean, just look at that. It looks amazing. Uh, yeah, new set of rifles. We've even got marksman rifles as well. Or sniper class, whatever you want to class it as. Uh, we've also got in here the, uh, the G. Uh, get excited. Basically, the uh, the in, uh, the insurgents get this weapon. Is it a G3 rifle? Another another great one. Don't think you'll possibly get a sight or some scoped elements to this. Quite a close quarters mid range weapon, I guess. Really, we've also got that. In. Now the uh, the RPG7 has also been updated. We now have two different types of rounds. One is for fragmentation types, which is against infantry, and we've also been given a heat round. So now the RPG gets to have his own little bit of tactics, and you get to decide whether you want to attack the infantry or whether you want to attach the heat uh, the vehicles with the heat rounds. Now, regarding the amount of rounds it will take to take out a Humvee or a BTR, well, I'm not going to spoil it. You'll find that out as you get into game with the Alpha 7. But definitely interesting, different impact types. There's also going to be a close quarters tank grenade. Yes, yeah, so don't think that you're going to be completely and utterly defenseless against these larger vehicles. You won't. Obviously, one infantryman's not going to do too much damage but two or three of your squad may possibly have some of these you can give a world of pain now yes the finally the deployable heavy machine gun the the dishka as i call it it's a it's actually an old soviet aa infantry weapon that was then decided to be used on infantry and the great thing about it is there is a full 360 degree arc of fire brilliant you are a little bit vulnerable. We haven't actually seen an option to place it in a bunker. And I tried to place it in a bunker last night with no luck. So there may be something coming for that. I know you can put sandbags in front and you are quite defended well, actually. We've also got new army soldier models. I'm not going to go through all the text here, but as you can see, these just look great. Got a new map as well, which I tried last night for the first time. Very open areas with sporadic little farm fields and things like that. So, as it mentions, great for vehicular combat, if that's your kind of thing. And speaking of vehicular combat, a lot of the maps now, you do have the options of playing infantry only. But more information on that, I'm sure, will be coming from the developers before actual release date. Now, Samari Bala was my favorite map 
after the update. But last night, and actually for a while now, a new map has been my king of all kings. And that map has been Chora Knight. And the reason for this is vehicles now with the tracers and the blasting around, especially with Humvees and things like that, when they're on fire, it's just utter eye candy when it comes to the night maps now. The lighting engine has been changed this whole map now. This is actually a map you're going to want to play on a night time. I really enjoy the night maps. A lot of people didn't, said it was too dark and they were cheating using gamma and you don't need to on this map. There's a beautiful blue hue to it. And seeing vehicles on fire and tracer fire flying all over. Amazing. You're really, really going to enjoy this map now. Well, they enjoyed it anyway. Uh, other things that have been updated as well. There's a new uh, water material being put in here. You can run through it. It looks crystal clear in certain areas. The water is really beautiful now with the new shaders. Uh, and it has got the full audio implemented as well. And as, I mean, do I need to say any more about the new Gorodok Dusk map? Seriously. It's just adding his infantry down here and seeing a BTR going across there or a Humvee. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be a lot of videos produced. Let's put it that way. We've also got a new update to the engine, 4.12 upgrade. I'll let you read some of this in here. It includes dynamic footage, density, and what else have we got in here? A lot of stuff, server-side, bug fixing, and things like that. New updates to modding. Oh, this almost looks like a Far Cry map. Vietnam is screaming out for some of these maps. As you can see, there's also a full Basha, Basha remake. Brilliant for close quarters combat. And as you see, we've seen much here. It's the tip of the iceberg. The full patch notes and the change log are coming soon. But as I mentioned before, coming from uh, playtesting, it really, really it has been worth it, guys. There's absolutely no compromise whatsoever. Everything changes from now on. You're going to have to learn to play in a completely different way. Vehicular combat has just mixed this up and turned this game from amazing to uber amazing. <laughs> so I'd like to thank the devs, everybody involved, the sound guys, the animation, everybody involved in what's been coming out. I know the community has been whinging and moaning, but honestly, behind the curtain, it's been utterly, utterly worth it. Be excited, be very excited, squids. I shall see you on the battlefield and with a little, little sneaky peek look at the Dushka video coming later today on my channel. Thanks for watching. I shall see you on the battlefield coming real soon. I've been better plays. Bye bye. Fucking squad! It's right